Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we're developing a full stack web application using Python Django as our backend and React.js as our frontend. This is not the first video in this tutorial series. Uh, in previous videos we've already focused on setting up the backend and the frontend uh, and enabling page navigation using React router DOM and some components from Material UI. Now in this video we're going to focus on posting the data from our front-end forms to the models in our backend. Um, and in the first part of the CRUD videos, we've already set up all of the code for our backend so that it can receive everything that we want to receive. Uh, and in the second part of CRUD, we've already put forms on our front-end and modified them a little bit so the users can put in data and uh, do And now in this third part, we're going to bring it all together and we're going to be using Axios to Take the data from our front end forms uh, and pass it to our back end so it can be stored in our database. Now, to accomplish that, uh, we're going to be following five main steps in this video. We're going to start by installing Axios into our projects because that's what's going to make the calls from our front end to our back end and our back end to our front end. Next, we're going to be creating a separate JS file for our generic Axios call uh, with some parameters. So we're going to set up one file with some parameters for, for Axios, and then we can use that in multiple places in our application. After that, we're going to modify our create.js file, because in the last video, we've just locked the data from our forms um, onto our console, but now we need to modify that and make sure that it's actually sent to our backend. Once we've completed that modification, we're going to test the outcomes, and we're also going to make sure that we can navigate to a different page after the submission. And before we start, we're going to make a small change to the current way that we create records in our application. Because you can see that in our console, I get quite some messages stating that our component is changing uh, from an uncontrolled input to be controlled. Uh, and I want to make sure that these messages are no longer going to be appearing in our console. And the way that we can do that is by defining the default values of the forms before uh, we do anything with them on this page. So I'm going to define a constant called default values. And in here, I'm going to define the default values of all of the forms that I have. And we can do that by stating the technical name and then just simply specify the value we want to allocate. Now, in this case, I don't actually want to use any um, default values. So I'm just going to set them all to being blank. But this will get rid of the message and it will also enable you to allocate a default value if you would like to do that. So I'm just going to complete the last ones, of start date and end date. And basically it's going to be all quite similar like this. Uh, and then we also need to pass these default values into our use form. So in use form, you open the squirrely brackets and then you can say default values is equal to default values. And actually, I removed the ones for start date and end date because uh, if you specify blank for these, it will not uh, work. It will throw an error. So let's now go over to our application. And we are back in our application. And you can see in the console that all of the errors we had before uh, have disappeared. Um, so that is good. And now we can continue with this video. And the first step in this video is to get the package called Axios into our project. And Axios is going to uh, facilitate the data transferring from our front end to our back end. So I'm now on the Axios documentation. And you can see here on the bottom that installing it is very easy. We can simply do npm install Axios. So we head over to our project and I cd it into my front end directory. And now I can paste the command npm install Axios to make sure that this package is available for us. The second step that we need to do is create a component that is going to have our default Axios uh, code that we can reuse in multiple files. So inside of my components, I'm creating a new file called axios.js. And in here, we will define the code that is going to uh, either fetch or post or do whatever we want uh, using Axios. And in this Axios files, we're going to start off by importing Axios from Axios, because that's how we can use it inside of here. And then we will define a constant called Axios instance. And within this constant, we're going to define everything that we need um, 
to get the data from the front end to the back end, but also from the back end to the front end. And in here, we define axios.create, and then we follow that up with round brackets and then some squarely brackets. And in the end, we're going to export uh, the default axios instance. And this is going to make sure that we can use this one in other files as well. Now, within this Axios instance, we need a number of parameters to make sure that we can submit or get data from the back end to the front end successfully. The first thing that we need to specify is a base URL. And this base URL needs to be equal to our, uh, basically, the base web domain of our back end. Uh, so I'm going to define an additional constant here called base URL. And I'm going to set this to our um, Backend. For the sake of convenience, I've just copied it over. And it's HTTP 127.0.0.1 and then this thing at 8000. And that should do it. And I'm going to make sure that base URL is equal to base URL. The next thing that I'm going to define is a timeout of 5000, which is going to make sure that there's a little bit of latency before we're getting or posting the data, just to make sure that it all works all right. And the last thing we need to define is headers. And headers is going to provide some information on this request, and we need to put squirrely brackets in there as well. And the first thing that we need to define in there is the content type. So we need to specify it like this and say content type. And this is going to be equal to application slash JSON. The other thing that we need to define is accept. This is going to define the, con the, the format that we actually want to accept here. And again, this is going to be equal to application JSON. And this is all that we need to do here for now. Now in our create.js file, we need to do uh, several things to make sure that we can submit this data. As a beginning, we need to import our Axios instance from that Axios. Next, we're going to go and delete this console a lot of data, and we're going to open some squirrely brackets in here. And we're going to state that we want to do Axios instance dot post, and we will open up some round brackets like this. And in here, the first thing we need to define is um, the URL that we want to specify. So to do that, you need to do a backwards comma, and I need to specify the extension where I want to uh, post the data to. Now you can see in my backend in the URLs uh, from API that um, our URL is project. So we need to uh, send it to our project URL. Now in our Axios, we've already defined the base URL, so we only need to define the extension. And that is exactly what we're doing right here. Uh, also make sure that you have a trailing slash at the end of it. Next thing that we can do is we can uh, do a comma and we can open some squarely brackets like so. And in here, we need to define what we want to send to this URL. Well, those are just going to be our model uh, attributes. So we're going to start by name and name is going to be equal to data.name because we're still using the data uh, word right here. Next, we need to do the status, and it's going to be data.status. We also need to do comments, which is equal to data.comments. And we need to provide a start date and an end date. And that's where it's going to get a little bit more tricky than the other two, and I'm going to show you why. So uh, just for a second, I will comment out these Post right here. I'm going to show you the console.log data again so you can see why this can be a bit of a challenge. So we're back in our application now and I'm just going to submit this entry to our console. And if I inspect it, you will see in the object output, like here, that the start date and the end dates are providing a wide range of outputs, including the days, uh, the weeks, the months. Um, it is providing a wide range of, uh, of different information. And what we're after is the complete date, but it needs to be in the format that our backend can accept. And if I go to my backend like so, you can see that the start date and the end dates need to be provided in the year, 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 slash 
or uh, dash uh, month dash day otherwise you will not accept it so we need to get it in that particular format um, so let's see how we can do that so the first thing we need to do is get this date and uh, change it into the right format now back in our code i'm just going to comment this out again and delete my console.log.data and to realize it and to make it a little bit easier i'm going to define a constant start date right here um, and we can convert it to the desired output by using day.js uh, and that means that we need to do another import so we're going to import day.js from day.js and we've actually already done this install for the date picker so this should be fine and what we want to do right now is we want to get we want to get this long date string um, specialized under dollar sign D and format that to the correct uh, format that we need. So under the start date, I'm going to say uh, day.js and in here I want to find the full date and we can do that by data.startdate and then square brackets, apostrophes, dollar sign D. And this will get us the very long uh, string of the date. And then we can do a dot format. And then we can specify the format that we want. And in there we specify year, 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 year. And then month, month. And then day, day. And for end day, this is going to work exactly the same. So I'm going to do the same string as before, but I'm going to say that this is the end date. I also need to give it a unique name, of course, so this just needs to be end date here as well. Okay. And then for the start date, we can define the constant start date. And for the end date, we can define the constant end date. Yes. And we need to, of course, do that well. And by doing this, it should be all right. So let's check if that is the case by submitting a record to our backend now. So back in our front end, and let's now test out the end result. I'm going to specify project two, and I'm going to say that it has a start date of uh, today and an end date of tomorrow. And the comments are going to be my comments, and I want the status to be open. Now let's click submit, and hopefully we will have it inside of our database. And as you just saw, we encountered a small little error. And the reason for that is that base URL should actually be base URL in capitals like so. And another change that we need to make is that the import of day.js does not need to be within brackets because that it will not work. So specify that import day.js from day.js. So let's try this again. So we are back in our project and we now have uh, still the same data, project two, the start date, the end date, the comments and open. And now if I submit, Let's see if something has happened. So I'm just going to go to my front end server to make sure that it is awake so we can see the new records inside of our uh, URLs. And now when we go to our back end in project and I refresh it, you can see that we have project two in here. So we have successfully uh, sent this record to our Django backend. Uh, which was exactly the objective of this video. Okay, so nice. Now the only thing that I want to change here is I want to redirect my users after um, they finish this request because it is, yeah, of course, nice to submit this, but you don't have any idea whether it has worked or whether it has not worked. Uh, usually, you you're being transmitted to a different page where you can see the end result uh, of it. So for now, I'm going to. Um, at a navigation that's going to navigate the user to the home page. So the first thing we need to do to realize that is we need to make an import from React Router DOM. And we're going to import use navigate. From React Router DOM. Next thing what we need to do is we need to define uh, this navigate. So in here, we're going to add a different constant, and I'm going to specify that navigate, and it's going to be equal to use navigate. 
now we can use navigate to go to a different page. And to realize this, the first thing that we need to do here is after our Axios instance, we're going to specify a statement called dot then and like so. And this is going to be a function, so it ends up like this. And we're going to define this as res. We're going to specify navigate. And this navigate is going to just mention the extension um, where we're going to navigate to. And in this case, it's going to be home. And we can check our apps.js file. And you can see that home is simply the base URL. And we probably need to define a slash for that class like so. So let's save this and see whether this works. So we're back in our app and we're going to create project three. And I'm going to give that a start date and an end date like this. And I'm going to include some comments. And I'm going to say the status is completed. And when we submit, we end up in our home page. Uh, and on this home page, in the next video, we'll create a nice table so we can see what we've actually submitted to our backend. And that was it for the video for today. And in today's video, we've successfully taken the output from our uh, front end JS file and send that to our backend to our SQLite database using Axios. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can uh, get the data from our backend to our front end and how we can use that to populate a nice looking table. Um, and in the videos to come, I will also focus on form validation with Yup and making sure that it just becomes a little bit better and also the process of deleting records and uh, editing records. So I hope to see you in the next video, and for now, bye-bye.